In this PowerPoint tutorial, I will show you how to organize your slides a little bit better so that you can more easily access them and also how you can do some kind of neat linking and presentation options because of this reorganization of your slides. And it's all made possible through a tool called Slide Sections. So what we have here is actually a fairly short presentation on lunar and solar eclipses. And you can see there are just 10 slides. It's not that long. In general, the longer your PowerPoint presentation is, the more useful slide sections become. Now before we actually look at creating slide sections, I want you to see two different views that are going to come in handy with slide sections. The first is this normal view that most people are used to seeing when they use PowerPoint. Just with the slides here at the left in miniature form, and then when you click on one of those, a larger view of the slide appears here at the center. So that's the normal view. But if I go down here and click the slide sorter view, this gives me another way to look at my presentation. Okay, so those are both going to be pretty important as we think about slide sections. So even though this presentation is somewhat manageable, it's not huge, I would like to start to organize the slides into sections. Now you would think that you would start with section one and organize that. But instead, what you would do is identify where your second section should appear. So for me, it's gonna be here. This slide on solar eclipses, that's my section two. So to create that section two, all I have to do is right click on the slide and choose add section. It gives me an untitled section and I'll title it definitions. So in this section, you'll find definitions of lunar eclipses, solar eclipses. And when I do so, look, it gives me a tip. You'll probably only get this tip the first time that you do this on a particular computer, but it says easy linking. I can drag this section header onto a slide for a ready-made link to that section. Now that may not make sense right now. Just tuck that away in the back of your mind. I'll click got it. So now I have my section two called definitions. Now when I set that up, it automatically also created a section one called default section. But I can click on that, actually right click on it and rename section. So I'll call this introduction and videos. Click rename. So there's section one, there's section two, and that's all I have at this point. But if I want to, I could very easily create a third section right here, add section. I'll call this optional products. If you're not familiar with the ViewMaster virtual reality starter pack, it's kind of a fun way to teach and learn about different topics like space in kind of a virtual reality experience. It's pretty cool. So I'll just click rename, and then I'll create two more sections one here and this section is going to be a quiz click rename and then my final section is here and its conclusion so now that i've set up four or five different sections i can switch back here to the slide sorter and you can see what it's done it's clearly organized these slides and these sections so that i can quickly see how many slides are in each section which ones are grouped together etc now, just like I renamed those sections here in the normal view, I can also do that in the slide sorter view. I could just click on the section title, right click, and rename. Now, notice that I can also click and drag to reorder sections, and I can do that in both views if I would like. And you can still reorder individual slides within a section as well. So in my mind, there are two reasons to consider using slide sections, and the first is what I just showed you. It makes it kind of nice to organize these slides into discrete sections. And especially with a long PowerPoint presentation, this can be very nice, very handy. Also, notice what I can do. I can click this little arrow just to the left of the section title, and it collapses those slides. And so if I collapse all of these, that's what my PowerPoint presentation looks like. Now let's say I know I need to develop this quiz section more. I can just click on it. I could click the arrow to expand it, and then I can add another quiz question. I could just duplicate that slide and then change the wording and make a new question for this quiz. So that's the first reason to use slide sections. It's great for organization. Let's look at another reason to use it. Now, unfortunately, what I'm gonna show next 
I think is reserved just for Office 365 customers. If you have Office 2016 or another version of Office, it may not work. Also, my understanding is it only works on Windows computers, but let's take a look at it. What I can do now that I've set up these sections is I can click on the Insert tab and on the Insert ribbon in the Links group, there's an option to create a Zoom link. I'll click on the arrow here toward the bottom of that button and it gives me a bunch of different options. Probably the best one in most cases is this, a summary zoom. So I'll click on that and what this does is it automatically identifies the first slide in each of my sections and it selects that slide. So each one of these with the check mark and the pink highlight, each of those is the first slide in a section. And then I just click insert. Now if I want to change any of this, I can. I can uncheck ones that I don't want. But for now, I'll just click insert. I get another pop-up. I'm going to just click got it and get rid of that. And it seems to have automatically put that summary section at the very top of my presentation. Now that may or may not always happen that way, but in this case, it is the first section in my presentation. Maybe I want that, maybe I don't. In my case, I think I actually want it after my introduction and videos. So I'm going to click on the summary section and drag it down and make it after my introduction and videos. Okay, so let's look at what this has done for me. I'm going to go to my first slide. I'll click this slideshow button to begin the slideshow. There it is. Some beautiful music begins. If I advance the slide, it's deja vu all over again. I get a video and then I get another video. I'm gonna mute that music just for a minute. But then it takes me to the section summary. And I have these thumbnails, each one linking to one of the sections in my slideshow. Now, if I simply advance the presentation using the arrows or the spacebar or a presenter remote, whatever it might be, look what happens. It zooms in on the next section to be learned about and then you go through that section and then it takes you back to the section summary. You keep advancing, it goes to the next section and it zooms in. That's why it's called a zoom link. And then I can go through that one and then it zooms into the next and it goes through each slide. Okay, you can see this timer. If you wanna learn how to make a PowerPoint timer, watch one of my other videos that talks about that. So this is really nice, but the other nice thing about the section summary is this. What if I'm in front of a group and we get to this point and I say, okay, now that we've watched these videos on lunar and solar eclipses, what would you like to learn about next? Do you want to learn about solar eclipses? Do you want to learn about tools that will help you experience space? Or do you want to take a quiz? So let's say they say, I'm ready for the quiz. Let's jump to the quiz. You just click on that and it skips the other content and takes you right to the quiz. I'm going to escape out of this. So here on this section summary zoom slide, I can just click and type something like, what would you like to learn next? Now, probably in very few cases are they going to choose the eclipses introduction, right? They've already seen the introduction slide. They've already watched these videos. So we probably don't need that one. So I'll delete it. And maybe we don't need the conclusion either. And I could delete that. But this really does give me some good options. Now, because we set up sections, notice that uh, just like it mentioned earlier, at any time I can click and drag a section title onto any slide and it creates a shortcut basically to that other section. So this is now a clickable link to take people from the solar eclipse section back to, in this case, the summary section. But you can click and drag any of the section titles onto any slide in the slideshow. Also, I want you to know that on any slide in your slideshow, you can go back to the Insert tab, Insert ribbon, go to Zoom, and you can select a section zoom. Pick which section you want to zoom to, click Insert, and it will add it that way as well. So that's similar to just clicking and dragging onto the slide, but it might be a little bit easier. And then finally, you can also select a specific slide, not just a section. So I could send people to this last slide, click insert. And so that last option is not really dependent on sections, but everything else is. So I hope that this helps you to be able to better organize your slides in PowerPoint. 
and it should open up some great possibilities for you with the zoom, summary zoom option using sections because it really does allow you to create a non-linear PowerPoint, a presentation that is adaptable for your audience. If your audience wants to learn about one thing, you click this. If they need to learn about something else, you click something else. And uh, I love the flexibility that comes with that. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it to be useful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribed button. That way you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you haven't watched my other PowerPoint tutorials, you really should. And if you'd like to support my YouTube channel, please consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll find links to that in the description below. And if any of you are interested in this product, you can find links to it in the description below. Also, if you want some suggestions for some really good and inexpensive presenter remotes, you'll find links again in the description below.